Cells overview, we're going to talk about the cell theory to start with. All organisms are made of one or more cells. So your dog, your cat, you, your goldfish, your um, oak tree outside, the grass, um, the worms out there, the bacteria under your fingernails, all of them are made out of cells. The only kind of wacky one um, are viruses. They are not alive and they're not made out of cells, so they certainly do have some characteristics of life. The cell is the basic unit of life, and so don't confuse this with atoms, which are the basic unit of elements. So the basic unit of life are cells, because we're all made out of cells. And you consider anything within the cell to be not living if it's all by itself. So the basic unit of life is a cell, and remember cells are made out of molecules, and molecules are made out of atoms. New cells arise only from cells that already exist, which sort of begs the question, where did the first one come from? But for now, we're just going to talk about um, all the cells on the planet right now came from cells that have already um, were already around. The basic unit of a, of a cell, um, sorry, the basic structure of a cell. Here's a cell. Um, might be one of your cells. Could be an animal cell. <coughs> That's something that students get confused sometimes. So people are animals, and so this is a cell that could be in a person. Here's a bacterial cell. There are two basic types, types of cells that we're going to talk about. One is prokaryotic. So there are prokaryotes and there are eukaryotes or eukaryotic cells. You are a eukaryote. Um, you're made out of eukaryotic cells. You means true. And karyote, I think it means kernel or something, but we're going to think of it as nucleus, anything with a karyote that's nucleus. So this has a true nucleus. So here's your DNA. And your DNA is protected inside this nucleus. That's really what your nucleus is for. The nucleolus is just the place where you make um, ribosomes because it's made out of ribosomal RNA. And so you're making that there with um, some proteins that you brought inside. So this part, there, the other structures in here, this is endoplasmic reticulum, and so is this. There are ribosomes, these little dots, and the ribosomes, if they're on this endoplasmic reticulum, we call it the rough ER. If there's no ribosomes, we call it a smooth ER. There's a lys lysosome that helps to um, break down stuff in your cell that needs to be broken down, like maybe bacterial cells that got in. Here's um, the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus. Mitochondrion, my favorite organelle, you'll find out why soon. Here's a centriole. Now, some of these structures have membranes around them. See the membrane around the mito mitochondria and see the membrane around the lysosome and this thing here, endoplasmic reticulum, that's a membrane. And look at this, even the nucleus has a membrane. Some of them, like a centriole, that's not a membrane, it's a bunch of proteins. The ribosomes here, these little circle things, those are proteins with um, a, a special type of RNA. And so those don't have membranes either. So some of your structures inside the cell are just protein, like this thing right here, a microfilament. And some of them have membranes. So there um, are basically two types of organelles inside the cell. Come over here and look at the prokaryote. Prokaryotes are bacteria. There are eubacteria, which are true bacteria, and there are archaebacteria, which are old-fashioned bacteria. But anyway, here's a bacterium, and you don't see any membranes in here. You've got the outer membrane, that's true, because you couldn't have a cell without the cell membrane. And then there's a cell wall um, and maybe a cell capsule. But inside, there's not a single membrane to be found. All it is is DNA in there to, set, to be able to, um, to have the instructions on how to make the cell. And then these little dots are ribosomes. And so you need the DNA for the instructions. You need the ribosomes to actually make the proteins and all your enzymes, which are proteins, which make up the entire rest of the cell. So that's the difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. This has internal um, membrane-bound structures, and this doesn't. Really simple, really small um, for the prokaryotes, really complicated and a lot bigger for the eukaryotes. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're just going to look at the basic differences between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So let's start with the prokaryotes. So cell types, there are prokaryotes. Pro means before, and karyote means nucleus. So these are the first cells. If you think about the evolution of cells, it makes sense that you're going to have the simplest ones come first, and that's what happened. They're little, and they're simple, and there's not much to them. So these are the smallest cells. 
the each bacterium is about the same size as one of your maybe one of your mitochondria, your little organelles. They are bacteria. There are two types of these. So there are eubacteria. Oops. Start that again. There are eubacteria. And there are archaebacteria. So this isn't so hard because you know an archaeologist studies old stuff. So archaebacteria. Um, are bacteria that lived a long, long time ago. We think those are actually the first life forms on the planet. They are very unique. They're very different from each other and very different from bacteria. So they're really kind of a fun thing to study, although we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. But today they live in really weird environments like um, salt marshes and hot vents, stuff like that, places that might have resembled the early um, the early planet, so that's kind of cool. Here's the most confusing thing about this whole unit. Boo hiss, um, you bacteria, this means true bacteria, and you'll see on our next couple slides, um, when we get to eukaryote, that's different. So let's go backwards just a second to look at, well, I'm going to erase all my stuff when I do that, but um, remember how there are prokaryotes, and then the big type of cell is called a eukaryote? Eukaryote. Okay. So the eukaryotes are the complex big cells, right? Big, complex. You're eukaryotic. You means true, so true nucleus. You means true, so true bacteria. So this is just the regular old kind of bacteria that we have today. You bacteria are prokaryotes. That's kind of tough, isn't it? There's the word you in both this and this. These are the complicated cells. These are the simple cells, which are prokaryotic. Ugh. I didn't name it. <laughs> so prokaryotes or bacteria are the simplest type of cell. They don't have anything inside of them. So remember, it's a cell. It's got some DNA in here. And it's got some ribosomes. And let's see, you've got a cell membrane out here. So you do have a cell membrane on the outside. And you've got a cell wall. Whoops, where'd you go? And so they don't have, there you are, they don't have anything else inside. They don't have any internal membranes. So they don't even have a membrane around their DNA. That really should say DNA. So the cells lack a nucleus, and they lack any membranes inside. So that's written as membrane-bound organelles. In other words, they do have ribosomes, which are organelles. So they do have organelles but they don't have or any organelles that have a membrane around them. Membrane bound means you've got a membrane around it. So if that's the size of, one of, of a bacterium, this would be the size of your cells. So that would be a lysosome, and here would be a mitochondrion, about the same size as a bacterium. But look at all the, um, all the membranes. Here's the nucleus. Here's, I don't know, some more lysosomes. Here's the endoplasmic reticulum. Pretend I'm drawing this right. Here's a Golgi body. So eukaryotic cells are a lot bigger, and they have membranes inside. Prokaryotes are littler. See, they're smallest. And they have no membrane-bound organelles. So this part is really important, no membrane-bound organelles. More about prokaryotes. They have a cell membrane and a cell wall. The cell wall is different than any cell walls in eukaryotes, but they do have a cell wall. So if you look at this thing, here's your DNA. The blue stuff is the DNA. These green things are the ribosomes. That's kind of it. There's goop in here, the cytosol, and then there's ribosomes and there's DNA, and that's really all you've got to it. Here's the cell membrane on the outside. This green thing, the darker green thing, is the cell wall. And then this thing is a capsule. Some of them have capsules. Um, it's going to be a polysaccharide capsule usually, and that will help. Well, it might protect it against you, actually. Um, and then there's some other structures on it, like a flagella or a poli, but they really are very, very simple compared to the cells that make up you. So they contain DNA, or, oh, sorry, they contain ribosomes, but they don't have any membrane-bound organelles. So a ribosome is indeed an organelle, but it does not have a um, membrane. A ribosome, all it's made out of is protein which makes up pretty much everything, right? Um, protein and then a special type of ribosomal, sorry, a special type of RNA called ribosomal RNA. And so we'll talk about this in a couple of units, but that's all they're made out of. There's no phospholipid bilayer at all. DNA is not, 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 not enclosed in a membrane, just sitting out there. So it's not protected like your DNA is. 
and it has a single circular chromosome. So your chromosomes have a start and an end. Bacterial chromosomes are a circle. Okay, eukaryotes, that's you. <coughs> so that's one way to remember it. You means true. <coughs> Excuse me. And karyote means nucleus. And so here's a cell that might be one of your cells. Here's the nucleus. Here's, um, you can tell those are membranes. So that's the um, endoplasmic reticulum. Here's some more endoplasmic reticulum. Golgi body, mitochondrion, lysosome, blah, blah, blah. There's cytosol in here or goop. But what you should see when you look at this is a whole ton of stuff in here. When there's a whole ton of stuff, that's you. You are made out of eukaryotic cells. And just don't confuse it with you bacteria. Boo. Okay, so they are larger and more complex. They include protists. Um, those are single cells and eukaryotic, so that's a little bit confusing. They include fungi. They include plants and you, animals. So everything that's not a bacterium is eukaryotic. They have a nucleus, and they have membrane-bound organelles, and they have organelles that don't have membranes in them. So main types of eukaryotic cells, there are plant cells. There, you can always tell a plant, well not always, but you can usually tell a plant cell because it's got um, a cell wall. And I say not always because protist cells and fungi, fungi also have cell walls. But you can tell a plant from an animal cell because the plant cells have these cell walls. And if you remember back to our unit on biochemistry, the cell wall is made out of cellulose. Here's an animal cell. It's, you can see it's rounder. Um, the animal cell doesn't have a cell wall, so it just has a cell membrane. But you can see inside both of them have some stuff. So they both have a nucleus. They both have endoplasmic reticulum. Um, they both have lysosomes. They both have mitochondria. The plant cell has some funkier stuff. It's got um, a central vacuole in here, and it's got chloroplasts, which, I don't know, maybe that's a chloroplast. Maybe this is a chloroplast. I don't see any green, but anyway. Usually there's chloroplasts in them, unless it's like the roots or something, and they don't see the sun, so they wouldn't need them. But there are a few structures special to plant cells, and there are actually a few structures special to animal cells, um, like centrioles, for example. And then there are protist cells, and here's the thing, that's just one particular protist cell. These are, the difference here, and I'll do this later with you, but these are single-celled, whereas the others are mostly multi-celled. Um, all bacteria are single-celled, but protists are a type of eukaryote that's single-celled. And there are tons and tons and tons and tons of different protist cells. And then there are fungal, fungi, and I don't think I had a good picture. Yeah, this is as good as I could do for fungi, but they've got a cell membrane. They've got complicated stuff in here, so there's the nucleus and nucleolus, and they've got mitochondria, and this picture is awful. There are also lysosomes and endoplasmic reticulum and... Golgi bodies and all that stuff. But anyway, notice the cell wall. And if you remember that from our biochemistry unit, the cell wall is made out of chitin. And I think that's where I'm going to stop. So in class, I'm going to have you do the similarities and the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The thing that's the same about them before I stop here, they're both cells, right? They both have cell membranes on the outside. They're both the basic unit of life. Let's see, they both um, have cytosol, that's the goop. They both have DNA. They both have ribosomes, although the ribosomes are different. Ribosomes. That's, uh, that's kind of it. Um, they don't all have cell walls. Let's see. So if you want to do prokaryotes over here and eukaryotes over here, prokaryotes are bacteria. Let's see, they're small. Eukaryotes are plants, animals, fungi, or protists. Bacteria are all single-celled. Eukaryotes can either be single or multi-celled. So plants are multicelled, animals are multicelled, fungi, except for yeast, are multicelled, and protists are all single-celled except for some exceptions. 
of organisms that are multi-celled but don't have specialized tissues. So this is just a weird, huge group. It's kind of hard to um, put them all in one little category. Let's see what else. These are simple. These are complex. These have um, a nucleus. They have membrane-bound organelles. Those are probably the two most important things, nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. Um, that means they're organelles with membranes. Let's see, as opposed to a ribosome, for example. Um, and I think that's really the, the basic difference. So if you have that, you'll be well on your way to getting the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Bye.